Alrighty. So this is the jug, Righteous, righteous Fire jug. And uh, I got to maps finally. Like I said in my other video, if you guys watched it. I know it was boring, but I was just showing off how tanky the build is. Anyways, we have made it. Level, I think level's 80. Yeah, 78. This build is actually quite fucking ridiculous in my opinion. It's, it's definitely a league starter. And uh, as I said in my other video, I've tried this build before. It's it's a bit of a, a tedious one to level. Like it, it's really hard to level because you're playing Jug, which is a melee character, and you're using magic abilities. It's it's a bit annoying, but it's not as bad as you think it is. Because I just used Rolling Magma, Flame Totem, and that pretty much carried me. And that's without you know the tabular Twink armor because I didn't want to do it with that gear to see if it was actually you know doable for newbies. And it's actually it's not too bad. It was a lot easier than you think it is. Uh, anyways, this is the build, 78. Defenses are over 16k, it's tw I think it's like 21k plus with my uh, endurance charges, which I think is four, five, five. And I think you can have seven when you have really good gear. Also, I'm res capped, but not completely for uh, lightning. Yeah, my lightning's pretty low and I'm not happy about it. I do need to get it up though. But as you can see, res is pretty damn high. Fire could be higher, but I think as long as you're around 200, you're okay, because I'm at 1400 uh, life per second out of 4100 health, which isn't really a lot of life per second, but it's enough to help. I mean, you could really push that life regen really high if you wanted to. You just need to stack more fire res. And if I remember right in the notes, life regen scales higher the more health you have. <laughs> Which makes sense, but you <laughs> you have more health, so you're not really regenerating as much. So that's that. And I, I'm using uh, Vitality, Determination, Malevolence, and Pure Developments. Yeah. As far as the actual build... I literally did not respec anything besides this part right here, I believe. Because I went up and grabbed this, but then I deleted that and went down. And I think I also respec something up here or something. I don't remember, but you do respec. But you don't respec until like probably like around 50 or 60, give or take. Something like that. But anyways, yeah, I went straight down, pretty much got everything you... I was supposed to go here when you level up. You go here when you level up. And then once you have dex and intellect to spare, which I didn't until way later in the game because of all of these intellect nodes, all of these nodes and this intellect mana thing gave me the intellect to take this away. And then I crafted, I think, dex on here, which... I didn't really want to do, but that's how it had to be done. Plus, this has decks on it. So all of that gave me the option to get rid of these. So you don't need these. So I went straight life. And then, down here is kind of more towards... I wouldn't say the end of the campaign. But you don't really need these early on. That's why we cut this way. Early game. And then we delete it later and go this way. Because early game... I'm pretty sure you go this way, and then around, and then down. And then we shoot straight up. Because your priority is to go like this, or whatever, or whatever way you're supposed to go, I don't remember. And then we go get the life nodes, grab these. But, I grabbed life. Yeah, I grabbed life, and then went straight up, and got elemental, got pet damage, and got fire. And then grabbed these. And then I went back down and grabbed these, and then I went back down and started grabbing these. So, you kind of want to go for priorities first with this build. Like I said, go straight over, get the health, get the elemental. You don't need this, the exposure, but you do need the elemental. And we went into here instead of here because we kind of needed this. And then we went into minion damage. We went into the reservations. You don't really have to go into reservations until later on because this reservation node is mainly for determination and malevolence. So, technically, you don't need to go into this. You could go into it, like, you know, up to here, if you want to. But 
you t pretty much only just go into it like probably two times. You should be fine. And then just go into health here. And then later on, yeah. Over here is where I got my big, you know, reservation plus this one. This one gives you damage. This one gives you reservation. But it gives you the mana regen and the mana, which is huge. Without this node right here, I wouldn't be able to use determination or malevolence. I mean, I have 39 mana. This gives me freaking uh, 20 intellect and 20 mana. 20% 20 mana. So yeah, that's pretty much the build. It's actually fairly straightforward. And obviously later on, if you have enough decks, you don't need this. You know. But this is more reservations as well. These reservation nodes you want to take because they're really nice. <laughs> Yeah, because that's 8% reservation plus 8% reservation. And then if you take these, you know. That's another. Yeah. It's like another 20 something, so it's really good. But yeah, just go for just go for the priorities first, you know. Get all these, get your health notes, get your elemental, get your pets, get your life, get your fire. Go back down, get your fire, get your more health and armor. You know, and then go back, you know, grab these if you already got them, obviously. Go back down here, grab your health, you know, grab this. You don't need this yet, but grab this and then grab all these and then go up here. Up here, in my opinion, was like end game requirements. Because now you're starting to start, you're starting to scale the fire. And because you have this, you can have determination and malevolence. But if you want to go up here first, I don't know why, but you can because you don't need this until end game. And you probably still need this. But we also have this cannot be uh, stunned. You don't really need this until maps. So you could actually technically just skip this whole area early game and just go up here. Grab all the fire and then come down here later on. War Cry is really useful in maps. Like really useful. It's not mandatory but it's useful because it's instant instead of waiting like a second, half a second. It's not a big deal. But for yellow and red maps you're definitely going to need this for sure. But, uh, yeah. So, technically, you could just skip all of this. Except this life node and the decks. You could skip everything else. And just go straight for fire. Because you have to go all three of these. And you have to get all five of these. Four of these. So, yeah. We're getting there. We're getting there. Anyways. As far as the gear. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing good. <laughs> the weapon's pretty trash. It has 27% burning damage, and it's got 33 added fire that I put on it. It's not really that great. And it only has 30 elemental damage, 30%. And it caps at 40%. <laughs> I'm trying to get a Opal Scepter, I think is what it's called. I think I have one. I have a lot of shit. Okay. Yeah, one of these scepters right here. Where is it at? One of these. It's a Void Scepter. I'm trying to get one of these. But uh, it hasn't wanted to drop. <laughs> so as I've said in my other video as well. I stacked a lot of armor on this character. Because I wanted it to be really tanky. Because there's two ways to play this build. You could be a slightly squishy character. With a lot of intellect and a lot of spell damage. Or you can go the way that the build was intended to be. Which is really really tanky. I chose to be tanky. So... I chose a beefy helmet <laughs> that I picked up. It's got 51% increased armor, plus life, plus fire resistance, which is good for me, plus 131 armor, a little extra strength, and almost not over 800 armor for the base. It's not too bad. And then for the chest piece, this is just a six, six link I had laying around for my minion build. I couldn't roll any uh, Eldritch stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> I ran out of those uh, thingies. So this is what the chest piece is. It's got really, really high life. Decent armor. And like I said, it's a six link. You don't need a six link. Like, <laughs> uh, I was using strength gloves. There is actually a pair of strength gloves that are actually really good for this build. These ones right here. If you could fit these on your build, you'll be even more tanky. But the only problem is, it's a strength. You need to roll, you know blue sockets or green like for instance my boots are green 
So I could just swap these two because these are intellect strength boots. So I could just swap all these over here and then swap this with one green socket. And that'd be a perfect transition between those two. I could just put these over here and then put the green socket in here with all the red. So I might actually do that now that I think about it because as you see, these gloves can roll life regen and a fuck ton of armor. So this right here would potentially put me at probably almost 18,000 armor if I roll really, really good on it. So that's 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 what I'm trying to do. I tried earlier, but it didn't work. But yeah, strength into like boots, as I said. Uh, Dex int for the necklace because you do need the stats from what I've seen. The reduced matter cost. <laughs> I don't know why I put that there. I was trying to do something for another build, so that's why that's on there. I just took it from another character. And then for the shield, just block recovery. There's probably a better shield than this. I mean, I don't even think you're even supposed to be using this shield. I think you're supposed to be using one of those, like, spirit shields, the bone spirit shields for spell damage and fire damage or whatever. But I haven't really got around to getting one of those yet. So this is just what it is. It's more fire damage, more dex, more life. Uh, the rings are pretty shitty. Elemental resistances, cold lightning, just mana. <laughs> and then just a pure fire ring to keep up the fire resistance. So I'm sorry, you guys. I'm, like, really tired. Uh, but this is a really good ring, actually, though. It's got 30 fire res plus an additional 43. Plus 4% of damage taken recouped is life, which I'm assuming that gives you life, if I read that right. So it's not too bad of a ring. It would be nice if it had double Ellie, though, like fire and something else, but it's whatever. And the potions are just trash, you know, fire to keep up the fire res, which equals more life regen. Onslaught for more power charges, or frenzy charges, to get increased attack speed, run speed. It's pretty useful. And then obviously more armor. So, it's a pretty easy uh, build to do. Nothing crazy, the fire traps are over 7,000 damage, and where's the fire trap? Up here? It's only level 18. It does 7,000 damage to 10,000, and Righteous Fire is pushing 69,000, which is 18. And it goes up to 20% more. So just that gem right there alone would probably push me over 75k. Which is pretty damn big. Because I think as long as you have 80,000 to 100,000 Righteous Fire, you could do red maps. Not T16, but you could do red maps, though. Anyways, here's a T10. Uh, I don't know if I could do a T10, because I've tried a... I tried a T7 yesterday, and it was a bit, it was a bit rough. Bossing was a bit slower. <laughs> losing stuff is slow. But yeah. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to show you guys that if you guys didn't see it. Yeah, I think I showed this in my other video, but this is the tree. So, we went down here first, which is armor, life regen, and then 40% increased life regen rate. This is huge. Just this node alone, I think, gave me over 250 health regen on top of what I already had. Like, this is huge. And then after that, we went to here. More armor. For endurance charge durations, 30% chance to gain endurance charges. Gain endurance charges every second if you've been hit. This is where the build starts to become a little bit absurd. <laughs> this, this is where it gets a bit ridiculous. Every time you get hit, you get endurance charges pretty much. Therefore, more armor. Here's where it kicks off. Endurance charges make you take less damage because it gives you armor but then you go into here and it gives you eight percent more damage so you're taking less damage because it's increasing your armor per endurance charge and you're increasing damage per endurance charge so that's eight percent per endurance charge and you have five endurance charges 
And I don't remember how much armor you get, but I think you get like a couple hundred armor per endurance charge or something like that shit. I think it caps out at like 2,000 armor or 3,000 armor for uh, five endurance charges, which is which is pretty significant actually, honestly. It's, it's, it's pretty insane. I don't remember how much it actually gives you though. Oh, and also increase area of effect per endurance charge. Area of effect is your righteous fire. So it's just a freaking nutty, nutty tree. Bit of a lag there, man. But yeah, look at that. 21 and a half. Five endurance charges. Elemental resistances and physical damage reduction. So it's like a win-win, dude. Like I said, I'm not not quite ready for this map yet. But uh You know, I have the damage, obviously. Oh hello. Good stuff, good stuff. We have the damage. Or don't. Oh, there we go. I don't think I hit the pack. That was my bad. Pop the chest. You know, throw the shit down. Throw the traps. And then... Kaboom. Easy peasy, man. Easy peasy. This is the way of the righteous fire. Look at that health regen. It's not even high enough. <laughs> not quite high enough. I'm uh, this bitch right here. Dude, these chests are so useless in this game. Oh. I need this. Get out of here. We need to pop this. This guy's actually a four essence, so he might actually be a little bit difficult. Get like. And we have corrupted blood that can't be inflicted on us, so we're perfectly fine. So far, so good, though. So far, so good. Health regen went up to 2,000 because I popped my uh, fire resists, which puts my resist at almost 300. Look at that, dude. Beautiful. But yeah, fire resists, the higher it goes, the more life regen, so just keep that in mind. So, in theory, if you can, try to get your fire resist to as close to 300% as possible without using a flask. And you'll have life regen like a motherfucker. And that's my goal, is to try to get it up. Because I had, I think my life regen was like 280 in the campaign, which was, or my, not my life regen, my uh, fire resistance was 280 in the campaign. It was crazy. This guy's really tanky. There we go. Just gotta get through that shield. Nice. Also, uh, for this build, like I was saying with the gloves, if you want to use strength boots as well, like these or something, you can. If you got the currency to roll those sockets, because it's a strength, so rolling the sockets are gonna be a bit of a, a bit hard. That's pretty much the map, I guess, huh? See what happens. Ah! You fucking wrecked. Yeah, look at that, dude. It's crazy. Now we just sit here and just pretty much like face tanker, I guess. This 
pretty much all we do. Whilst she's doing this, just chuck traps on the ground. Pop this again. Get the curse on her. I don't think that does anything. Dude, we're just gonna like sit in the water, dude. It's too much damage. That's too much damage. <laughs> we're not tanky enough for that. But you can literally just sit in the water, dude, and just not give a fuck. I just don't have enough health to gym. There we go. Purple jewel, blah blah blah. Yeah, look at this, dude. You can just sit in the water. <laughs> it's a pretty tanky build. Nothing here. But anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's the build. I mean, with this trash gear, I could already do T10, which is pretty much right under uh, red maps. So, and to be able to do this essence that easily was actually uh, pretty impressive because that was corrupted blood, and corrupted blood essences will fuck you up like you wouldn't believe. Because for one, the boss hits hard. Also, the Corrupted Blood will just destroy your life. But because Corrupted Blood can't be afflicted on me, that's huge. But you have all these other resistances that are really, really nice. But also because we're so tanky in physical armor, essences aren't really much of a problem because essence bosses are usually physical. And if they are magic, then you're probably going to die. <laughs> but uh, the Corrupted Blood ones, I think, are usually always physical bosses. But sometimes they can be magic. And you'll know if they're magic if you played the game long enough. You'll sometimes know if they're magic just because of what enemy they are. And that's something you gotta keep an eye out. Because if they're if they're a cold boss, you're probably gonna get your ass handed to. You know? <laughs> but yeah, this build is pretty damn tanky, dude. It's pretty crazy. I mean, 1,252 base life regen without endurance charges and with my fire flask, 1,300. So you get like 120 health regen on top of almost 100 per endurance charge because I had 1,800 health regen. I was pushing 2,000. So that's already almost half my health in life regen per second, which is nutty or ha every half a second so it's pretty crazy and the physical damage reduction 78 I was pushing 21,000 something so it's a pretty cool build I uh, I definitely enjoy it 